Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of It's Cold as f in This Apartment. I'm your host. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you wanted to go shoot some photos at 5 and then beat the crap out of your enemies with a blunt object at 6? Well, boy, do I have the camera for you. That's right, today we're going to be reviewing the Pentax 6x7. So there's actually three types of Pentax 6.7s, I guess you can call them. There's the first version, which we're going to be looking at today, which is the Pentax 6x7. Uh, the second generation is called the Pentax 6 7. And then the third generation, and the final one, as far as I know, is uh, called the Pentax 672. Whether you're looking to buy one or just entertaining the notion, you may rest a little easier tonight knowing that there's an all red version of the Pentax 6 7 up on eBay right now. Probably sponsored by Flaming Hot Cheetos. Honestly, I've never seen anything like this, and I'm not gonna lie. It looks pretty hot. If I wasn't already in a healthy, committed relationship with my Pentax 6x7, I'd f it. Anyway, let's cut the crap and get to the review. All right, well, here it is. This is the Pentax 6x7 camera. It's kind of an SLR type of body. It's got a huge mirror inside. This camera shoots uh, 120 film uh, or 220 film, but who the crap still uses 220 film? As the name suggests, it shoots six by seven centimeter uh, negatives. So with 120 film, uh, you get about 10 shots on this. However, on this camera, it is a little bit broken. So it doesn't really give me that full 10th shot. In fact, it gives me about nine and a half shots. I think it's a spacing issue. So when I like wind the film to the next one, um, I think it leaves too large of a gap between frames. If you are looking into buying this camera, I would definitely check with the seller before you buy it to make sure that there aren't any spacing issues you get the full 10 shots. So one of the like big things with this camera is that it's pretty heavy. So it might not be the best for uh, like hiking or traveling unless you like carrying around heavy stuff for some reason. I don't know, maybe you're super jacked and uh, this is like no problem. It weighs about as much as a newborn baby. Though I think uh, we both know which one you'd rather be carrying. Uh, so carrying this, you can get the uh, wood grip accessory here. It does make it a lot easier to carry because the sides here basically are just kind of like flat. So not the easiest for the human hand to grip. Some people think it's on the uh, wrong side of the camera, but kind of have to disagree. It is really convenient to just carry it like this because then you can fire the shutter here with your other hand. So to load the camera, um, the back here opens up like a typical 35 millimeter SLR camera. Uh, there's a little thing on the side here. You're gonna take your thumb and push down on a silver lever and it should pop open. Once it's open, you can uh, open the back like a 35 millimeter camera. So this camera has a bunch of accessories on it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart so you can kind of see like what the base model generally looks like. I've got a lens hood here and I've got a uh, lens focus ring here, which I'm gonna go ahead and take off. And then we, of course we've got the wood grip handle. So let's go ahead and take that off. You can just screw it on with a little knob here on the side and then you pull it out, push it down and then it comes right off and it just looks like that. If you're gonna take the viewfinder off, you must take the lens off first because they're kind of connected through a chain in the system. If you take the viewfinder off first, you run the risk of damaging that chain. So to take the lens off, there's a little, I guess, button here on the side. You can go ahead and push that in. Cool. So let's go ahead and take the viewfinder off. Um, two pins on the side here, you're gonna wanna push down. So I'll push down on those and take that off. Pretty hefty now that I'm holding it by itself. There's a chain right here. This is what you run the risk of damaging if you take the viewfinder off before the lens. I believe it's used for the uh, light meter, so you may wanna ask someone about that if, uh, if it's damaged on their camera before you buy it. This viewfinder is uh, very, very nice. It's got sort of a um, rudimentary light meter in it. I, I wouldn't say it's anything special to be honest. Um, I don't really use that. I use uh, the light meter on my phone. So if you're considering buying this, I would highly recommend just skipping the light meter altogether. The viewfinder slides on just like that. Put a dot on your lens here. Put it on, handle back on. So let's see. So probably my favorite thing about this camera is the shutter sound. The shutter sound is so goddamn beautiful. It's literally music to my ears. I'm not saying this camera is gonna help you get laid, but uh, you know, come on. There's uh, two really cool tricks. So this camera will not actually fire the shutter unless there is film in here. 
So you can kind of trick it to do that by popping this back door open. There we go. And then there's a little winder here that shows the number of shots you've taken. If you go ahead and turn it with your thumb to a number besides zero and then close your shutter, you can trick it into thinking it has film in it. So now there's more tension in the winder and I can fire it. Shutter speeds range from one one thousandth of a second all the way down to one second with a bulb mode as well. So the second trick I wanna show you, if you flip past one one thousandth of a second here to kind of this like blank zone, it'll just switch into bulb mode and keep the shutter open. So right now the shutter is completely open and uh, it will not close if you try and click this again. But if you move your shutter dial here back to say like one one thousandth, it'll close. So if you're doing a long exposure shot, this may be uh, pretty convenient for you. Uh, I learned that trick from uh, my friend Caleb. He also owns a Pentax 6.7. He owns the second generation though, which is the Pentax 6.7. I think the main difference between the first, second, and third generation is that they have mirror lockup. So this mirror is, like I said, pretty huge. There is a chance when it fires, it might rattle your camera because it's just a huge mirror slapping up and slapping down. With mirror lockup, you can literally just um, press a button. I think it's on this side of the camera and it uh, flips your mirror up so you're ready to fire and it won't flip the mirror up and possibly vibrate the camera. All right, so let's talk about this lens a little bit. This is the Takamar 105 millimeter F 2.4 and some people buy this entire camera system just to use this lens. I don't blame them. It's an incredible, incredible lens. Don't even talk to me if you have a Pentax 6.7, but not this lens. One of the best lenses ever made. Some of my favorite photos I've ever taken have been with this lens and camera combination. I highly, highly recommend this lens. So a fun fact about these lenses is that they are slightly radiated meaning um, they have a radioactive element in them called thorium. It's not really dangerous. I, I remember reading somewhere that a banana technically is more radioactive than these lenses are, but it does mean that over time, these lenses will actually kind of start to turn like orangish or orange yellow. So there's actually two things you can do about it. One, you can cry about it. Two, you can actually just expose it to sunlight like a flower every now and then, and it will clear out the, the oranging and sort of the uh, hazing effect that it has over time. So the other thing that's uh, pretty annoying about this lens is that there is a auto and manual setting on the uh, lens here, which controls the aperture for you. So if you wanna shoot manual, you can go ahead and flip it over to manual and that'll give you uh, custom control over what aperture you wanna use. However, you'll see that if I flip it to auto uh, and turn the aperture, nothing happens. This is because it's trying to read light meter information from the camera and decide what the best aperture is for you. So why does this suck? There's been like maybe a dozen times where I've accidentally bumped it and flipped it to auto by accident and not realized it. So I've been shooting, you know, maybe changing the aperture a little bit, uh, completely like messing up my exposure. So it's pretty annoying, but um, I guess it's just something to be aware of when you're shooting. If you wanna use this camera with uh, lens filters or uh, whatever, it is a 67 millimeter uh, filter thread. Um, that's about that for that lens. Okay, so we need to take our dog Baxter for a walk. So I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to shoot a roll on the Pentax 6.7 so you guys can see what it's kind of like shooting it in the wild. So uh, let's go.
a bunch of tennis balls down there in the water. I thought it was pretty funny. We got about one shot left. Uh, my half shot, so I don't know what I'm gonna shoot with it. 